Welcome back, everybody, to the season finale of Everything Horror Podcast. I am your host tonight for this amazing final episode of Bridges, the psychological horror game that is coming out this year. Um, I am also joined tonight with a few awesome people, but of course, as always, we got my co-host, Tessa Baker, followed by our new co-assistant, and our special guest tonight, Lamont Derrickson. And we are all here to discuss our thoughts on the upcoming game, Vigage. So let's dive right in, shall we? So first thing I just kind of wanted to do is, how did you guys first hear about Vigage? Like, I have heard about it from Bloody Disgusting, I believe. They had an article up about... Uh, game inspired by PT called Vidges coming out next year or something. And I'm like, hmm, okay, well, let's see what this is. Because you know how it is when a game gets inspired by another game or whatever. Some some of them tend to suck, in my opinion, and then some actually look really well done. Well, in this case, Vidges caught my attention. And, um, yeah, before you know it, I pledged it on Kickstarter, but I just wanted to talk to you guys, too, about how did you guys first come to hear about Vidget? Um, I came, I actually came to hear about it through you. Um, you showed me the project on Kickstarter. So that's where I had heard about it first, was through you and seeing it on Kickstarter. Um, it... It looks like it's going to be really good, but I'm not sure yet. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But it'll be interesting if this uh, game could actually manage to scare my boyfriend, Paul, here. Um, Because he has yet to be scared by anything or any game or any movie, really. Well, in recent state. In recent state, yes. But yeah, that is true. Um, I actually did mention, which I will get later on, that um, I'm really hoping this game does do its job, and I do hope that it does scare me. But we'll get more into that later. But, uh, Lamont, how did you first hear about Vidges? I heard about it um, for real. I remember when we had that discussion about PT being canceled and how upset we were. And you were telling me about um, other stuff that may have, like, been inspired by the game. Me, personally, I'm actually excited for it. And what I've seen so far looks really good. All right. Crypto? Well, like Tessa and Lamont, I heard about it from you. Um, I remember I was playing something on Twitch, and then... We started talking, and you said, you heard, had you hear about this new game coming out? I was like, no. He was like, check it out. So I went and checked it out, and I was like, whoa. It's, you know, just like uh, Alice and Rhoda, this is like, like this is going to take place of PT. I mean, it looks really good. Like, it's a really interesting game and concept. So I'm really, really looking forward to playing that game. I'm pretty sure it's going to make me really scared. Everything makes me scared in horror games, so... I'm ready for it. Very nice. Very nice. So, um, did either of you guys pledge it at all on Kickstarter, or was it just me? I'm just wondering real quick. I did Okay, so it sounds like I'm the only one that did pledge on it. Okay. <clears throat> all right, well, that's okay. So, um, so yeah, so after I heard that, uh, Vidges came out, or was coming out, to PC at first. I was just like, okay, well, let's see what this game can do. And I, what I did was, um, I did that whole uh, keep me updated thing that Kickstarter had, which is pretty nice. But in this case, I actually checked it like every week. And uh, they actually did have a goal to reach, where if it did get reached, it was going to come to console, like PS4, Xbox One, and stuff, and at first, I didn't want to pledge right away, because I didn't want 
to have this game on PC if I come kind of forgot about it. So, because I just would just love it to uh, have a console. Plus, I don't really have a great uh, PC to run big, awesome games on yet. But um, that's a one-day expense that I hope to have one day. Uh, but anyway, so... Uh, I was following Vidges on, I believe it was their Twitter, and they tweeted one day saying that they reached the goal for consoles, and I'm just like, alright, that's it, I'm done. I'm looking at the pledges, and I came across one, and I pledged it. It was $150, I get an awesome t-shirt of Vidges or Sad Square Studio logo, I get a hand-signed poster with Vidges logo, I get a physical copy of the soundtrack, which we will get to the music later on in the uh, uh, podcast. But I just wanted to throw out there real quick that um, the soundtrack, the physical copy of the soundtrack, was kind of one of my main purposes of backing it up that high. Because it was really like the only amount you could do to get a physical copy of the soundtrack. But, um... Uh, but yeah, so not only do I get that, but I get all of the above. So I get, like, have your say package, which was, uh, I can add my own comment in the awesome backers section of the game. I get another copy of the game for any s- system that I want, too. Which, um, Crystal here, she, uh, already has claimed my second copy because... I would tell, because I talked to her about it, and she was just like, yeah, I didn't get a chance to pledge yet, blah, 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 and I was just like, well, I'm getting a second one, if she, second copy, if you want to see, like, uh, hell yeah, so, yeah, it's been claimed, uh, so, the next one is called Awesome Backer Package, where I get credited in the Awesome Backer section of the game, pretty much. So you're going to probably see my name in like two sections of the game. And then I, um, the first one was pretty much like, you just get the game package, which, like I said, I already have like, uh, two copies of the game already. And then the last one is, uh, pretty, it's actually kind of funny because I, I want to read this because... I like how Sad Square Studio has a humorous attitude when it comes to uh, their studio and, like, making horror game-wise. So this is what it says if you pledge, like, $5 or more. It's called the We Love You Package, and it says, You have our sincere gratitude, and you are now part of the band of people who help some weirdos make a game about dead families. Smiley face. Cough, cough. We mean help visionaries combine art, horror, and invasive uh, ideas into building a world that will leave you both troubled and amazed. Wink. So, like I said, they have a cool little attitude going on. So, uh, yeah, that was my Kickstarter. So now let's get into the uh, the trailers. We we'll talk about the trailers. So, um. If anybody star, uh, took note at all with the uh, uh, 17 minute all gameplay video that I sent you guys, who, do anyone anyone want to start first or should I start first and then I'll let you guys <coughs> chat well too? How do you guys like to do this? Um, basically what I took for notes was um, it's a psychological horror game. Takes place in a house in a secluded town in the 1980s. Um, house doesn't seem to decay, yet it's centuries old. Um, dozens of families have lived there. Some have died rather brutally um, by triggered inevitable deaths. Or is it just mere coincidence? Um, throughout the game, you're going to relive fragments of deaths and witness how people died in that house. Um... One of the quotes that I liked for the game was, Each death has its visage, will you dare to look into its eyes? Um, or the other little quote is, Each death has its visage, um, how will you face it? Mm-hmm. 
which is the other one that was good. Um, as you go through this game, you're um, and you're in the process of uncovering uh, uncovering the truth. You're gonna learn that something doesn't want you to. Um, you're gonna be like stalked, um, stalked and haunted by these various entities. Um, yeah. Uh, the game is designed to mess with your mind. It, like like it's like I said, it's a psychological horror. It's more to mess with your head than jump scares. Um, it'll make you question your own reality to a point. Like it's like oh, it's all quiet and happy and stuff here, but could there be something in the darkness? You know. So. Um, Throughout gameplay, you're going to see things you really wish you hadn't seen, like, as far as entities go. Um, you don't have... You don't move. We can hold off for a minute. Hold off for a minute, yeah, okay. Yeah, because you're getting into gameplay, so uh, we'll wait on that for a little bit. But I'm, uh, d did you see the trailers, though, baby? Um, I saw the ones that you sent me, yes. So, um... Did you see the 17 minute one though? Yeah, the one that you sent me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, would you want to discuss on what you've seen for those videos? Because there was uh... the 17 minute one that you showed me um, of the gameplay. Well, it was all the gameplay they released, but yeah, there's like yeah. one, two, three, maybe three or four different type of videos. Yeah. Three. Yeah, but you only sent me one. But I'm gonna Should talk have been about three. Anyway, anyway, yeah. Um, basically, from what I experienced from watching the gameplay for Visage, um, it's gonna be one of those games that's gonna put me on edge. It's probably most likely gonna scare the shit out of me, um, because it just, it's that intense, and, um... Like, the entities that you run into in this game, they pop up when you least expect it. They come out of nowhere, and, um, they're, meant, they're meant to toy with you. Like, um, example, um, first entity that you notice from what I saw in the gameplay is triggered by you picking up a videotape and putting it in the VCR, and it plays, and there's this big black shadow thing. Kind of with outstretched arms and claws, similar to the Bob Babadook, but it's got a shrouded head. You can't really see a face or anything like that, but it appears over the TV in the room that you're in. Um, another example of an entity is you go upstairs to check a bedroom, and you go in with the door open, and then the door shuts, and then you hear like this, like, bang, 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 like something's like hitting against a door or a wall. So you go and you open up the door like slowly, because you don't know what you're gonna what you're gonna see when you open that door. And there's this long-haired entity in like white clothing, like banging their head against the door, like across the hall from you. And then the door, if I remember correctly, um, the door slams shut, and then you try you to shut open the door. it. Yeah, and then you try to open it, and it's locked. You know, things like, things like that, and the one that I'm probably gonna, like, scream like a, like a, like a bitch on is the closet one. The one that you run into when you're in a really confined space in the closet. And you're, you got the lights going all crazy and flickering and shit, and then, like, you see this thing coming, like, at your face, and then it goes all dark in there. So that's probably where I'm gonna, like, scream like a little baby. One of the examples. Yeah, and you forgot one more entity. There's one more. It's uh -huh. The one that's like sitting down, like like crouching down, and then he like looks at you, and then he disappears. Oh yeah, that one. Um, another entity is um, you go into this like area where you see like these lights that are like focused on this person that this entity being type of thing that's sitting crouch down and you get closer and the lights start to flicker and you get closer and it flickers again and then they go out and then they come back on and he's gone and then like moments later the lights go out again and, and this like really freaky 
entity just starts going nuts and all these weird contortion movements. Kind of similar to, like, how, like, just, like, a off example, like, you know how Samara moves when she's crawling up the well in, like, in the ring? Kind of like that. It's, it's freaky. So, um, personally, I think this game will probably be really good, good enough to scare me. Um, then again, I'm the person that said hell no to playing PT, because I saw a little bit of gameplay from Paul, and I saw a little, and I saw like an hour of gameplay from his friend, um, Jack, Jack Masuka, Jack Masuka and that was enough for me. I was like, oh, no, no. But, yeah. <clears throat> so, that, that's my thoughts. All right. Um, Crypto, how about, you, how about your thoughts after watching that 17-minute uh, little video? So, I haven't watched, because I already watched it today, just to refresh it. Uh, that, like I said, I think it's going to be like, I guess the right word would be like the predecessor for PT. Like, the entities. Like, especially the one that claws with the little girl, the one we were talking about beforehand. Like, I think that one, that one's going to scare me. Like, especially when I actually play the game. Uh, I mean, the graphics are beautiful. I mean, I like how you can interact with a lot of things in the game. Uh, I mean, in spite of the banging, the entity that's banging their head. Like, at first, I didn't know what that was. Watching the video, I was like, okay, you know, what is this? And then when you open the door and you see it, I'm like, oh, shit, you know? And so, like, I, like, just, I don't know. It's just the whole environment of that game really gets you immersed into it. And I, me, like I said, I'm a big old scaredy cat anyway. I mean, I played the PT trailer, and even though it pissed me off, it, it scared me at the same time. So I think this game is really going to scare me, especially, like I said, it's what I read uh, on the site, like, every playthrough is different. Things are going to be different every time. Your choices in this game affect certain things that happen in the game. So it's going to be really, really interesting. It's going to really scare the shit out of me, especially because I don't like when I'm, like, really in a game and something slams shut or bangs. That shit scares me because it shocks me. So, like, just those little things in that game itself are going to probably scare the holy hell out of me. But the entities are really interesting, and I'm really looking forward to how you interact with them. Because uh, I don't, I don't want to go too far, but reading it, you can't fight them. You're defenseless in the game. Like even in the, the playthrough, you have no weapons. You're just walking. So like I'm really interested on in how you interact with the creatures or the entities, and you know, as far as psychological, if you watch that 17 minute playthrough. Things change so quickly that you're just like, wait, what the hell just happened? So, I think it's going to be really, really good. All right. Lamont? I think it looks dope as hell. Definitely something I want to play. Like, like all of you said, with the whole psychological aspect, uh, I'm interested in how that's going to play out, especially from the info about like how they were saying, even though they might like, jump scared, they're not really going to on it for this game. So I'm really curious about to see like how they're going to do that. And the entities was probably my favorite part of the whole trailer. So I from the um. That one scene in the trailer, if you guys remember, where you, you open the door and then it's like you left the house and you ended up on some kind of shit looking thing or whatever that was. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, um, yes. Yep. Yeah, kind of like that Silent Hill world, as I called it. Yeah. You talking about the boiler room looking thing? Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, not being able to fight back, I'm interested to see how that works, too, because, as you all know, I lasted it pretty damn well. Agreed. Agreed. 
Um, so I wrote down some notes as well when I was watching these uh, three videos for each three different things anyway for the game. But uh, the first thing I noticed in the first uh, first little video of the 17-minute uh, long all gameplay video is when you, the, it first starts, your guy like is gasping, almost like he's choking on air, and he wakes up in a bathtub. So I'm wondering, was he like experiencing some type of drowning, or was he being like strangled or something? Because he wakes, he pretty much like gasps for air in a bathtub, is how it starts off. And then uh, the graphics, like everybody has kind of said, like it just amazing the environments look amazing um which um crystal mentioned it's a in uh tessa that it's inspired by pt and i've even said it was inspired um just like crystal i mean tessa was saying about the vhs tapes which um i kind of thought was weird at first until you see that one videotape that kind of drops from the second floor and then you see that entity after you're kind of watching the tape or if the tv even turned on by itself i don't even know but that two, three little seconds when you see that first entity in that video oh man i just gotta say that they're sad square is doing something right so um so the next little bit of that it gets even more weird. Like you hear, like near the end of that first little video, you start hearing screams, and then you're seeing like different parts of the game where like it will almost look like you're in a claustrophobic uh, area, like where you're surrounded by doors, no way to get out, and it's shaking as hell. Your character is screaming. You got like an upside down like little room thing where you're on the ceiling, and then. Wipes out, man. <laughs> it even says something on the picture, which I forgot to, to uh, write down. But, I mean, there's even notes in the video, too, to, for you to pay attention. The next video is that brand new entity that we got shown where the person is kind of just crouching down and he stares at you while the white are flickering and then it finally turns off and when it turns back on that thing is gone but then that freaking black goo psychotic thing is going nuts and crazy and this thing i don't know about you guys but that thing looks fast and like disturbing at the same time especially when it's on its knees and it's like like sliding or whatever it's doing and then it disappears and then it's right back to that and then it's right back to that, like, normal thing that you saw at the very beginning. And then the lights go out. And that was the end of that one. Uh, the next, the final one is kind of long. Because this one's like a 12-minute uh, little section. Where, if you notice, too, it starts off showing you, like, a picture. Like, like uh, the guy triggered, like, a picture that had this um photo or painting of this uh thing that is pointing with keys so the puzzle idea for that i find very interesting because you don't really see that much in ga horror games where puzzles have like a painting or a picture pointing you in the direction while holding the quote-unquote uh item that you're looking for like the key in this case so uh, you go upstairs to check out the, the room, you're searching, the whites go out, you're searching some more, and then you finally find the key. And then as Crystal was saying, you hear bang, bang, bang. And I, did, and I made a note of this too, which I found really interesting in the uh, gameplay. But then now after hearing you guys is a little bit, it kind of... Uh, uh, opens up another theory in my head but it's while you guys have been searching in this room this bedroom you're quietly searching for this key until you find the key and then as soon as you find the key that's when the banging starts and then when you open up that door and see that entity banging its head to get into that room um 
you know, I, um, at first I'm wondering if you swam the door. So all the time you've been quiet, you finally swam the door. And I think you lock it. But now, from like what uh, I believe Tessa was saying, that it actually just swammed on its own and locked on its own. So who knows, in this case, what really happened. So I didn't really think of that before. But I figured you swam the door and you locked it. That way the, the uh, entity can't get in. The closet scene, which I'm, I made a note right now, but that very beginning music with the bell toll, uh, that music right there is probably one of my favorite tracks so far in the game, and that's in the closet scene where, you, where you're trapped trying to find the way out, and then you hear this cry or moan, and then you turn around, and the, that entity is right there in your face. Um, I also made a note where uh, the gameplay seemed to have when like it like blacked out. So I'm wondering if it if that was uh, if any gameplay was cut out there, or if the entity got the player playing the demo, or what? Because the next thing you see is you're opening up the kids' room, which if you paid attention to the other videos and stuff, you notice a lot of kid drawings of a red door. And I just find that very interesting. So it's almost like there's subliminal messages through the kid drawings, too, that you need to watch for. Um, and then you finally, that you find that picture again that's pointing you to now a safe, now that you found the key, but now it's telling you that you need to check out the safe. That's where the key goes to. Where you find this leaf, which of course is signify or symbolizes a tree, had to have come from a tree. Which what Lamont was saying, uh, at this point in time in the video, it like you find that entity one more time when you open up the door where it goes down the hallway, and then you open up another door where it where it almost turns into like a Silent Hill feel because of the boiler boiler room. That I just felt like Silent Hill just because I just kind of remember the uh, first movie of Silent Hill when they're running away in the boiler room and then Pyramid Head comes in to try to kill him. That's what I felt like when I was seeing that part. But then you walk up to like what I'm going to call the Tree of Life because I really don't know what this tree is yet because the game's not out yet but w when you guys saw that tree what were your thoughts on the tree which i'm surprised none of you guys actually mentioned that uh Chris, yeah krista we'll start with you when you saw that tree what were your thoughts i i was confused at first because you go through this like dark boulder room area and then it's like this peaceful looking tree and i'm like all right you know Something like this looks nice looking and serene can be really bad or really good. So, uh, it, it's, it's, it's strange. Like I said, it, things change so quickly in this game from scene to scene when you're playing, well, as through the, the uh, playthrough. Like, the scenes just change so quickly. And so it's just, it's different. Like, I don't know what the tree represents. I don't know if it's supposed to be just the souls that are trapped in the house, or if that is your way of getting out of whatever's happening. If you know, if that's how you beat the game, or you know, it's it, it, it's a real big mystery. Like I said, you go to that creepy boy room, Silent Hill looking thing to that, and you're just like, all right, this is really weird. So, I mean, yeah, I guess it's really up to your imagination for now, but that's my idea. I, I guess, like, that's supposed to, like, it's like a tree of life or something. Maybe it's connecting everything to the house. Or, or maybe, like I said, it's your way of getting out of this nightmarish thing that you're going through. Sort of like a child, a memory, kind of. Maybe something Eric to remember. Well, that kind of goes by the whole, uh, what Tessa was saying earlier about reliving, uh, fragments of the past, which that tree might have, like, memories of the lost souls, which, I, that's what I was yeah, kind of, which I, that's what I, I kind of figured. 
as well. But then again, like with the house, like as you were talking about how he's gasping in the tub at first about the drowning. I mean, maybe it's me. Once again, I'm one of the big spirits people, but who to say that he's also not a spirit locked in that house? And he's like the only good spirit or something? And he's trying to figure out what's going on in this house. Yeah, That's so why maybe. I think he's really like trying to stop him. So maybe he's a spirit and he isn't aware of it. Right. Yeah. Maybe he's he is dead as well, and he let's say he's the one that's trying to fix everything. But you have all these like malevolent spirits that are trying to stop him from trying to fix everything, and that tree maybe like be like one of the major keys to help him fixing everything. I'm gonna just say that's just my idea. It's a pretty good idea. I like um, that I agree idea. Agree with you on that. Yeah, I agree as well. Yep. Yeah. Um. So, babe, did you have anything to add about the tree? No. No, but I do agree with Crystal. I I think it like it could be the key to unlocking unlocking what's going on in in the house. Agreed. Um. So yeah, that tree definitely has something to do with something. Yes. So. Because when I first saw that, I was just like, why the fuck is there a tree? And then, like, you know, this is at the beginning, so you don't really know too much about the game, really. And then, as you're kind of moving forward into this, like, you're starting to see more, and you're, like, starting to develop theories. Kind of like what Crystal just said about your protagonist might already be dead, but doesn't even know it. I mean, I guess we won't know until the game comes out and when we play it ourselves. Yeah. But, um, so let's talk about some gameplay. You guys mentioned Defenseless, which I'll get to right now. So, in the, inside the house, you are Defenseless. You have no weapons. No weapons could save you from the dreadful entity stalking you from the next corner, the next door, or underneath your feet. So, what we've seen, too... It's not even all of it, because apparently they can even come up underneath our feet. Which is more disturbing, because I don't think I've ever seen a game do that, really, where something will grab you from your feet. Which I kind of hope they do that right. But I'll keep going, um, because what I'll do is when we'll read, what I'll, I'll read a certain specific thing, and then we'll take our, uh, thoughts on what I've read. So that way we can get um, more proportion out of it, I guess we'll say. So, so yeah, so uh, you won't be able to defend yourself from anything that comes your way. And you'll be able to pick up key elements, interact with the environment, and search for things that you may escape this nightmare or pull you deeper into it. So, um, kind of like Crypto was saying before, you have so many different ways to play this. With the replayability of this game, sound high. Because this sounds like you can do so much that you possibly didn't know the first time playing or something. Uh, another thing is the dark entities. The families that died in the house will haunt you and leave you restless. They will follow your every move, watch you from every corner, play tricks with your mind, and they will try to attack you. And then why do they haunt you? What have you done to deserve it? I guess you'll have to play the game to find out on your own. Uh, and as for death-wise, which I think Crystal and Tessa were mentioning something about it, possibly, I think. Um, it says here that dying will be part of the game. You'll need to avoid terror at all costs. As dark entities are attracted to it, Maintaining your mind as sane as possible will keep you from joining the ranks of the dead. Doing so will not be easy, and you'll have to figure out ways on your own to avoid going insane. There are no tutorials on how to survive such atrocities. So, thoughts on that? Well, Mott, we'll start with you. From what I just uh, read, what are your thoughts on all this? Well, what I personally think is maybe they mean they're like when you die, you, it's not exactly like a game over or a restart from a save or checkpoint. I guess it's like meaning if you die, the, the environment will shift to something else. 
probably like a take on what they mentioned in like the info about endless mazes and whatnot. Like if you die, it'll just slow your progress rather than like giving you a chance to redo that certain part over. Pretty much puts you in a different part of the game. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, but I don't know if there's any checkpoints or not. It really doesn't even give anything away about a safe system or anything, which is interesting. Because I would think you would know if there's checkpoints or something, but I don't, I don't think they even tell you. But, uh. Yeah, that's what I personally think that. I mean, I hope there's kind of checkpoint, but if it's drawing you deeper, then maybe every time you die, it's dragging you deeper into the darkness as well. So, um, maybe that's how you gotta play it out as well. Uh, Crystal, your thoughts? Um... It's going to be really weird if they don't have checkpoints or some kind of, like, save mechanism in the game. I mean, it'd be really good, but, I mean, I don't want to die or get killed and have to start off completely all over again at the, at the very beginning. Uh, I do like how they tell you there's no tutorial, though, of how to defeat or get away from these monstrosities. It's pretty much, they throw you into this game, and good luck. Like, you have to use your own wit, I guess, to, uh... Day scene in which, I mean, it's kind of like uh, amnesia. Amnesia is the same way you have to keep your sanity to a certain level before you go crazy. So I really like the aspect of it. But if you don't, if it is like how Lamont was talking about, how we were speaking of about, you know, if you die, it drags you to a different part of the game. It's like maybe like different layers. Like maybe like you experience the worst of the worst every time you die. Because there's multiple people, multiple people who have died in this house. So, I mean, maybe, you know, the more you get drugged down, the harder it gets, or the worse the entities are against you. Um, I mean, it's really hard to say with only the 17 minutes of the gameplay that you get to see, but I really do think it's going to be an interesting kind of thing. Um, but I guess only time will tell. But I really... I do like that there's, there's no tutorial at all. Like, some games, I get pissed off that there's no tutorial. So I kind of want to know what I'm dealing with. So with this game, I, I like that they it, it, it gives you that vulnerability. You have no idea what you're going to begin. And you have to figure out how you're going to survive and what you're going to do to get away from these goats since you have no weapons and no way of defending yourself. Babe, do you have anything to add um, about what uh, I see you have it on your notes, but did you have anything to say about your thoughts on that? Um, so let's talk about the concrete gameplay, which uh, Tetra will explain, but I kind of think we pretty much hit the... Uh, the spot. I agree with what you and Lamont have said about uh, what I've read because it would be interesting if the more you die, the more darkness consumes you rather than if you avoid it, you're staying in the light per se. But anyway, babe, <clears throat> talk to us about the concrete gameplay, what you will be able to do. Um, you're going to have various different um, techniques at your disposal for the core gameplay. You're going to have the good old point and click, which you take your mouse and click on things. Um, you get to search everything and everywhere. Like, nothing is off limits. Um, you can open drawers. Um, you can, um, like, open, like, you can search, like, pretty much anywhere. Um, it's going to have a mind-blowing atmosphere, real-life horror simulator, just like PT. Um... When you go to open doors, you'll be opening them slowly, like in, um, like in the game, like, just like in Amnesia, because you don't know what's on the other side of the door. Um, you can interact with the dark entities, but, um, I don't know if I would recommend it. Um, 
you have to manage your stress in this game, um, like, um, Crystal and Lamont, and, I think so. and I think Lamont mentioned as well, you have to, like, keep your wits about you. Um, you can interact with the environment, um, examples, you can turn lights on and off, um, you can pick up things like, like, key, um, to help you unlock new paths, um, also, another example of picking up key elements, you pick up a VHS tape, like I mentioned in the beginning, insert it into the VHS player, and it triggers the entity. Um, another thing you can interact with is dark entities. Some dark entity you will be able to interact with. Yeah, I did mention that. Uh, I didn't even hear you then. Yeah. But go on, you can... Um, well, you talked about the point and click. Uh, we got the whole search, everything. Um, the the mind-blowing atmosphere that Tessa was saying. Like the horror simulator, yeah. Well, yeah, but um, it says here, they wrote, uh, pretty much the mind-blowing atmosphere come from what was shaped by the Silent Hill series. Um... And Tessa did mention a real-life horror simulator from PT, which apparently that will expand to a much, much deeper level. And um, pretty much she covered everything. Uh, I do have something I want to add, though. Okay. Um, Visage is the first horror game in which most events are triggered randomly and each playthrough will be different. Like... The choices that you make will lead to different endings and outcomes. Like, nobody's playthrough is going to be the same. Everybody's playthrough is going to be unique. Like, no one's going to have the same if, like, things happen. Which is awesome, because that's going to be... When the game finally comes out, I think we all should meet up again to talk about our experience of what we've gone through. Awesome. Yes, go ahead and finish. Well, I was just going to say, that would just make a great episode, because hopefully all of us have experienced something different, and we can talk about what scared us the most or whatever. So I think I think this game has a lot of potential, especially since it has VR um, support. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Well, uh, the reason why I, I wanted to say that is because um, I just really believe this game in VR, when I get my VR this year, hopefully, um, I just hope Vigid is the game that scares me to death. And well, I, I don't want you to die, but I'm, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> As I die from Vigid, whatever, you. yes. I wish Vigid scared me to death, let's put it that way. <laughs> then you guys can uh, write to uh, Sad Square and say, You killed me! You guys killed this guy! You killed my boyfriend. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, the last thing I just wanted to say about VR before uh, Tessa continues, because I think uh, she's almost done with her note, and then we can continue on. But uh, in VR, since it is supported in VR... It does say that the open doors is like an amnesia style. You push the door yourself slowly because you aren't sure you want to see what's behind it. Yeah. Especially if you're wearing VR, according to what... Uh, I'm like a boss. Yeah. According to what this uh, even says. So pretty much in short, you'll be able to do exactly what you should be able to do in a real haunted house. Except try to punch a ghost in the face and flip the tables. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So what do you guys think of that? So it's pretty much like a real life, like you're really going through this house in real life. No special powers or anything. So what's your thoughts on that? I, I like it. What's that, Crystal? I take a sip of Bloody Mary before I get on that subject. <laughs> sure, the well. Right. Hey, I told you, come on. I don't care, buddy. I just um, think there's a lot of potential in this game, especially with the amount of freedom you have. Because, I mean, at least you can kind of search everything rather than uh, certain games not being able to open certain things. At least this gives you the full freedom of being able to search everything. Well, I like it because um, they say something about it's going to make you be kind of terrified of being in your own home after you play the game. It's going to make you fearful of being in your own house. Yep. 
which uh, I think is really interesting, uh, especially because it's so realistic, the house that they're playing in, the graphics are so realistic looking. Uh, I can see it, you know, I just have a big old scary cat, so I'm going to have all my damn lights on my house when I go to bed at night because I'm going to be terrified of someone who's banging on one of these doors. But uh, I think it's going to be really cool. I think it's awesome that you can interact with every drawer, you know, the doors, pick up on things. Uh, and I'm just playing Amnesia, and Amnesia is a really fun game so far. So I like how the door style is, how you open them real slow because you don't know what's on the other side of that door. Uh, so I, I, I'm really excited for it. I'm really excited for that fear, especially after they said that, that you're going to be scared to be in your own house. I'm really excited for that. I think it's going to be really, really good. And I agree with what you said, yeah. I mean, I'm uh, that part about the whole you're wishing that you're going to come back to the house thing, like, that's just really interesting. Um, before we head into the next topic... Uh, Hon, how about finish up what you have for notes? Because I see you're almost done with your notes. So um, The last bit that I have for notes is um, the platforms, uh, the gaming platforms that Visage is going to be available on is PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Um, before I get into the music part, I forgot to mention this when we were talking, when I was talking about the Kickstarter, but, um, so, this was the stretch goal that, uh, Sad Square wanted for Vidges, so, which you'll probably all find really interesting, so, I wanted to share this as well. So, what they wanted was 25, about $35,000 of Canadian money, which rough rounds about $25,000 U.S. money. Uh, so that, that $25,000 brought you the game. The game comes to life with the main, uh, antagonist. Um, if it got 45000 slash 32000 U.S., Silent Hill 2, uh, lags on your Windows, uh, M.E. PC? Question mark? No problem. We'll bring Vision to PS4 and Xbox One. We just need a little help. So consoles gets unlocked at 32000 What they did reach. So once they hit that 32000 that's when I pledged. Um, the next stretch goal was at $36,000 U.S. dollars. And it was VR support. They unlocked VR support. So that's amazing. At $54,000 U.S. money, it's, the stretch goal is called It Gets Real. And what that means is we add in more 3D characters, models, 3D character models. Uh, the dead family members will join the main antagonist's ranks to haunt you down. So we're going to be dealing with a dead family coming after us in the game. Um, they unlock multiple languages, which was 61,000 U.S. dollars. And here's the best one yet. They got, they unlock the next, uh, the next stretch goal, which was the major game extension, which is bigger environments, bigger animation, big, better everything. Like, Bigger chance of an insomnia after playing the game. Just kidding, you'll be alright. It's just a game, right? Um, they were actually three stretch goals away from unlocking all their stretch goals that they wanted. And the last three that did not get unlocked were multiple endings, um, a secret one, which we don't even know what that was, or is, and then the last one was, if it got like 720000 U.S. dollars, was the house becomes a town. And the house becomes an isolated town. We're not building a story anymore. We're building a world. That's what it would have been. Vigids would have became a world instead of a, uh isolated town. Which, that would have been interesting. But, uh, let's continue on a little bit. So... 
music wise, did you guys get a chance to listen to the uh Vigid sound samples at all? I did. Crypto, what what did you have any favorites? Because there were quite a few different ones. Um, Melancholy and You're Not Safe are my two favorites. I like You Are Not Safe. I also like the, uh, the, and Biden. Mega Bomb was good. Yeah. Evident? Yeah. Embryant. Embryant. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's my favorite. And Melancholy. Yeah, so You Are Not Safe and Embryant is actually the first, is what you actually heard at the very beginning of this uh, episode, just because I love those. Those two. Those are, I think, hit horror really good. Uh, Lamont, what were you saying now about your favorites? Melancholy and Embryant. Embryant, yeah. Uh, what about screenshots? What did you guys see for screenshot wise? Did you guys look at the screenshot? See like that creepy girl with her head facing down but her hands are out? The creepy entity in the hallway? Then you got like the hanging heads and stuff like that, like did did you guys take a look at the screenshots? I did look at the screenshots. Yeah. Um, I did see the little girl. I did see the uh, hanging heads and stuff like that. I mean, if you haven't looked at the game itself, guys, go look at those pictures. I mean, they're for a horror game, they're beautiful. They're really good, and it's like it seeing the little girl. You, you know what to expect. You're not going to get into this from the mill spooky ghost looking things. They're really fucking creepy. I mean, they really set the environment. Just go look at the screenshots. Even if you haven't watched the 3D in the video, look at the screenshots. Yeah. See what you're about to get. Yeah, the video is going to scare you too much because of, like, what's going on. Just look at the, sc- the nice, pretty screenshots because you won't get scared of screenshots, I promise. But, uh... Yeah, I do have to agree. Uh, Embryon and You Are Not Safe have to be my two favorites. Um, there is a few, though, that um, is not on the uh, uh, Vigids page from Sad Square. They are on uh, Kickstarter. One of my other favorites have to be Darkness and Monins. Those are on the Kickstarter page but those two sample tracks those those sound good so it makes me wonder where exactly those come into play because we already know uh Embryon, that's the closet scene and you can actually hear that in the actual gameplay on youtube so that's how you know where that comes into play uh babe did you have any favorite uh music samples um, Ambient and You Are Not Safe. I like those. Okay. <laughs> those are, those are really good. And they put you on edge. Nice. Uh, let's see. Looking back at my notes. Looking back at my notes. Um. Oh, there is something I forgot to mention while we're talking. Yep. Did anyone notice when you're walking through in the playthrough, the radio clicks on and it goes, ha. I've got you. It's kind of like the ghosts are actually fucking with you right then and there. Because it's supposed to be like this little radio show. But if you actually kind of listen to it, it's almost like a foreboding kind of thing of like, you know, we're well, on to you and we've got you. Well, the ghosts, or the entities and the spirits are supposed to trick you, mess with you, like play tricks on your mind and stuff. So I could see that, yeah. I could see that as being them, definitely. I agree. Just, you know, get inside yeah, your head and mess with you. Because, like, when you're walking through and the radio just clicks on, and it, it's just perfect timing, the guy on the radio is like, ha, I've got you now. And I'm like, okay, that, that's not foreshadowing at all right there. That's not yeah. creepy or anything. That, well, that's almost like um, PT again, when you're listening into the radio. And at one point, the radio will be like, don't touch that dial. Or it'll say, like, look behind you or something. Or, or, or Like, that's what it kind of reminds me of, too. Sort of like saying you done fucked up now. Yeah, pretty much. 
Pretty much Perfect like, like if Vidget told me on the radio that I need to work behind me, that's pretty much me saying, okay, what else is on this beautiful desk in front of me that I can look at without turning around? Or this wall looks beautiful. I'm just going to stare at this wall until I get to the doorway. I'm not turning around. Well, you can always be me. I'm going to look at the ground. I'm not going to look at you. I'm not going to look at you. Excuse me. I'm not going to look at you. I have All pretty right. feet. Like, yeah, it's like I'm going to look down at my feet or I'm going to look someplace other than behind me. Or I'm going to look up at the ceiling. Oh, look at that ceiling. Such a nicely painted ceiling. Oh, look at that window. I'm pretty sure I can bust through it and not get hurt. I'm going to bust through yeah, that Yeah, I'm going to jump out the window. Yeah. But what if the game forces you to turn around? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, then you're fucked. Then the game can't force me to keep my eyes open, now can it? <laughs> yeah, it can't force me from hitting the power button, either. <laughs> right? <laughs> this I'm game, going to this... Click. Sorry, go ahead. What were you going to say, Crystal? Oh, no, I was just saying, I'm doing click and turn the power button off. Right. Um, from what I also read, this is, like, supposed to be, like, the, one of, like, the scariest horror games, like, ever. Like, it's, like, they really, like, went all out, like, to really get inside your head and, and fuck with your mind. And make you see things, even in real life, that you question. Yeah, they actually made a, uh, a note in uh, one of the uh, main pages, either kicked under their uh, actual page, where uh, they said that they like jump scares and all, but they rather build a game where it involves trying to get inside your mind. And try to scare you... Without using jump scares. So, that kind of goes into play with the whole, like, you need to manage your stress. Because that will, like, affect you in real life as well. But, um, to, to, I'm going to keep going a little bit. So, we'll do the same thing. Like, I'll uh, read what this says and then we'll share our thoughts on on it. And then at the end of the episode, we'll try to wrap things up really nicely for the season finale. I can't even believe it. Uh, anyway, so this one says uncertainty is the root of all fear. And it says you get to wander through the halls. You explore each room in every corner of the house in search of an escape route. Uncertainty will keep you on your toes as you explore the creaky and noisy house, while each crack, each silent breath from a window, and each small event will drag you closer to death. Um, and then the last thing I'll say, and then I'll sh have you guys share your thoughts, but it's, uh, it says, you are not alone. Fear is your worst enemy. Dark entities are attracted to it, remain calm, and escape terror at all costs. Oh, you come to realize that the distant moanings and coming from deeper in the house aren't so distant after all. So. Yeah, I can see it now. I'll be, like, trying to stream this on Twitch, and I'll have, like, my headset on and everything, and probably have the camera in my face, and I'll be like, so I'll hear a noise or something, and I'll be like, oh, shit, what was that? Remain calm. Remain calm. Don't panic. And then you hear, like, another, like, eerie noise, and it's like, okay, I'm panicking. Yeah. Um, like I said, I mean, I really do hope this game scared me. I can't really say what, like, what it's going to do to me yet, because uh, we are supposed to be getting a demo for this game at some point when the demo gets done. So I just hope that I can get the demo on fucking PlayStation, not PC, because otherwise I ain't going to be able to play the demo. And that's going to suck. Because I really would love to get a taste of this game before it comes out. But, uh, I mean, if they're saying that you got to keep calm in real life, I can only imagine all the shit they're going to throw at you just to try to stay calm. Which is what I want. Because like Tessa was saying earlier, 
I haven't been scared in a long time, and I just hope that this game does scare me when I have my VR headset on. Crystal? Um, I'm kind of like you. I know it's going to scare me. I mean, I have no doubt in my mind that this game is going to scare the holy shit out of me. Plain and simple. I already know it. So, that's already down pack. I really do hope, though, like, I kind of wish, in a way, it kind of did, like, how Alien did, and how the camera would, like, pick up noises. I wish, I mean, it's, it's far-fetched, but I'd love if you had, like, a, a bracelet or something that, like, monitored your pulse or something. So, like, all the noises and stuff that would make you, like, your fear rise would catch onto your pulse rate. And you'd have to actually control your own fear in the game. So the entities couldn't come closer to you. I mean, I think that'd be a really interesting thing. I mean, it's far-fetched, it's weird, but I think that'd be really unique, something like that. I definitely agree with you. But that would be awesome. I mean, it would it would really make the game it would spike the level. I mean, because you'd really have to concentrate on not getting scared. Right. I think it'd really be neat. Uh, but I, I already know I'm probably going to die many, many times in this game because when I get scared, I lose my wits uncontrollably and I just start running around like a chicken with its head cut off. So I know I'm going to get scared. I'm going to probably die several times in this game. But, I mean, I really look forward to it. Um, like, I think we've pretty much talked about how I look forward to I mean, and I hope it scares Paul. I hope when Paul switches it, I can watch him, watch him get scared and go, ha, you know, I can laugh at cheat. So, uh, uh, I, I think it. I think it really is gonna be really creepy. Like I said, it like it's the predecessor of PT. I mean, it, you can tell it is just from the gameplay that you see. It's very PT-ish, and I mean, I had to think about high hopes for this game, and I can't wait to play it. I mean, I do hope Paul will have to get up the play, uh the PC. I hope his code is the PlayStation so I can watch. So. Uh, I'm excited. I just, there's not much more I can say but how excited I am for the game. Because, like, I think we've talked about everything that, like, I'm looking forward to. So, I just, I'm just ready for the game to come out. Agreed. It can't come out soon enough. Agreed. Which, it did yeah. have a, uh, release date of January this year, but because of, um, you know, the ways and stuff they pushed it to the second quarter of this year, which is fine by me because, by all means, work on it to make it great. I kind of hope it's like an October release. That'd be perfect. That would be nice. Uh, Vermont, do you have anything to add to what I was uh, reading? Um, no, other than uh, I'm just really excited for the game and I hope everything they're saying about how scary and psychological it's going to be is true. Because, you know, it's probably been a while since we've had something outstandingly scary. I mean, Outlast was pretty scary, but that was mostly jump scares. And I need something that's going to, like, you know, actually want me to turn the game off and play. Okay, I'm not playing this shit anymore. (laughs) <laughs> all right um i have like two remaining things and then we'll start to wrap it up with the remaining questions um so this next topic is called history is never forgotten which is um uh tessa did kind of uh i believe mention some of this but this might be a little bit more of an accurate description too but we'll find out too so if this has already been said i apologize i'm just reading from my notes now uh so history is never forgotten many terrible things happen in this house brutally and violence stain every room telling stories of a dark past revealing the truth behind the curtain a truth so disturbing you, you could join the family that died here years ago. But even death won't help you weave this dreadful place. 
And then the last one it says is the category The Many Faces of Death. And this is where one of my favorite quotes came in to play. Uh, and I'll read this real quick. So The Many Faces of Death. What would you become if you couldn't even recognize yourself in the mirror? And then each death has its visage. How will you face them? And then visage is the first horror game in which most of the events are randomly activated throughout the game. Each playthrough will be greatly different. Uh, the choices you make will lead to different endings. Virtual reality is supported. Uh, you'll be immersed in a cutting edge 3D environment thanks to the Unreal Engine 4. And then last but not least, like what Tessa was saying, it will be available on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. So, yeah. So what do you guys feel about this tr dark truth that, like, even the entities don't even want you to know? And it even said that it's going to make you wish that you died along with the family years ago. So what are your thoughts on that? Maybe it's something that possibly the main character is connected to. Like, not him per se, but maybe like his family or bloodline of his. And it, these entities are sort of like trying to make him pay for it, him or her pay for it, you know, kind of. And it's like, okay, we couldn't get your family since they're already dead or whoever, so... We have to get you. You have to see, and you have to pay for what they have done. I mean, I don't know. That's just what I think. That's a good theory, though. That is a good theory. Just like one of my theories is, uh, what if you were the murderer of the dead families? So. And, and possibly not remember. Good. That could be good. Yeah. Um, that was m one of my theories. Uh, babe, do, do you have a theory about who your antagonist could be and why the dead family members are coming to get you? Um, I think I'm, I'm more in, in of a grants with Crystal's idea. You don't, like, you could be dead and you don't know it and you could be, like, the benevolent, like, spirit trapped in the house that's trying to free you know, free yourself as well as everyone else around you. I mean, it could, there's like so many theories as to who you really are and how you got there that um, it's hard to pinpoint it. Like, I guess we'll just have to see when we, when we play. When we finally get the finished product. Yeah. Agreed. But, um, okay. Um, I guess what I want to wrap up with is, uh, kind of like what Crystal was saying and then your thoughts. Uh, so Crystal, you were mentioning like the alien game with the camera where it would detect sound. You kind of hope that they could or would do something like that with this game? Yeah, that'd be freaking phenomenal because, I mean, it wants you to like, you know, in the game itself... Uh, control your fear, you know, keep your wits about you because the more scared you get, the more the entities are attracted to that. So, like I said, if you had like a little bracelet or some kind of monitor or something that could like actually pick up on your heart rate during the game, I could that would be really awesome because then you'd really have to, you know, struggle about to fight your fear for the fact that you didn't want the entities to be able to come closer to you and you go further into that darkness. Or insanity. So I think that would be a beautiful concept. If they didn't do it, say it does a visage to or visage to, I, I would love to see something like that in a second game or something if they could. Because that would be a really awesome concept to put into the game. Well, then I'm going to die a lot. Real. I'm going to die a lot. Then. <laughs> I am too. Because with the way Mer with the way my, our cat loved to ch chat, oh yeah, he's going to get me killed. He's going to get me dragged deeper into this darkness. I'm never going to stay in the light unless I turn that off. They make the game more interactive, like, especially with the VR headset on. I could definitely see that happening because 
Oh my it God. would make we it so realistic, me. too. It would. And me personally, since the bar and the HT5 are for in, like playing the VR, like playing that paranormal activity game as little as I got to play it, you get with the headset on, you don't hear anything but that game. And you're in that world. So I can imagine being envisaged with that on and having to like hear those noises and see them entities. And hear nothing else but that, yeah, that would really it up the game, but it, it'd be worth it to me. I would, I would enjoy it. Agreed, agreed. Uh, Lamont, well, is there anything that you would look forward to in this game that we haven't mentioned yet? Um, there isn't exactly one thing, but uh, I'm excited for all of it, but yeah, like I was saying, the VR is just like something that, that'll just make the game way better. Okay. Okay. Um, I do have to agree with Crypto. It would be cool to have something around that um, option, I'll say, for lack of a better word, but using your PlayStation camera or whatever, to, like your connected microphone or something to just detect sound in your house to make it more realistic would just be awesome. Um, I am kind of curious about if they could possibly pull off DLC for this game. Maybe go inside, go into like some store, like a two-part story or big-ass story about the dead family, so we can learn how they died and get more of a backstory if we don't really get enough backstory in the game kind of thing. That would be cool to see. Kind of like with the Evil Within with uh, Kidman, how we got to see her background story. That would be awesome. Sort of like a different point of view of another character that went through the same horrifying events. Yeah, to make them the uh the dark entity that they're gonna that they are in the game, yeah. Like what caused them to do it, yeah. Like it's just gonna be like an Amityville house type deal. Like are we stepping into like an Amityville house where the family got murdered in their sweep with an axe? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we're gonna have to wait and find out. I know there is something I kind of look forward to, like, it would be a great idea for them if this game does really well, how they want to do, like, a whole world, maybe the second game, if they do a second one, make it into a whole world, kind of like a Silent Hill thing, like, this one is the house, so if they make a Visage 2, then they can do the whole world instead of just a isolated town kind of thing, where you can actually mm-hmm. wander the city or whatever it is. So, that yeah, would be I cool. I like that idea. I like that idea as well. Um, other than that, I think that's really much about it. Um, babe, is there anything else that you would like to see in the game that we didn't mention that you would hope to maybe see? We did mention about having, like, um, like a camera pick up sound to make it more realistic. Um, I, I agree with that. I mentioned DLC. Yeah, that would be nice. Is there anything else that you would possibly would like to see Vidget pull off or add or something? Visage will actually manage to scare you. I'd like to see that. <laughs> Besides that, <laughs> we talk game wise for a damn problem. minute. I think we. we I, I think, think we guys, all would be in a treat for that. I think you guys pretty much covered anything that I would have added. Um, so you just would like like a also like a decent story at least. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, a, a pre-order bonus would be nice for PS4, like a static theme or something to customize the home screen. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. But I guess we'll have to wait. <laughs> and then it plays like one of the creepy songs from the soundtrack that we heard. It's kind of like a, uh, what the hell do they call it, a uh, dynamic theme? Is that what it's called? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that would be sweet as hell. Kind of like have like the main menu be like 
like a nice perfect like lighted up kitchen with food on the table and then like when you go to check like your friends and notifications it's like that dark entity in your face it's just like oh boy yeah, it just pops up and it just makes like a, a shrieking sound or something for a split second <laughs> like a hissing sound like <laughs> be like oh shit <laughs> that'd be neat or like have the kitchen and then like it flicker the lights flicker and then the lights come back on there's an entity sitting in that kitchen with Oh, that's so, a good idea, too. That's a cool yeah. idea. Um, actually, you know what? We didn't really talk too much about the entity too much. Um, so, from what we've seen gameplay-wise, there we've only seen two type of entities, kind of-ish. So, you got the, the girl, and you got this shrouded, like, hooded figure with long ass like fingers um we'll discuss that real quick and then unfortunately that's going to be the end of the final episode of season one which i still can't believe it went by that fast and yeah so real quick what are you guys thoughts on the two entities the little girl one, like the one in the closet crystal, and then uh, the entity that uh, Tessa was mentioning about the uh, TV. What What are your thoughts on those entities? Like, do they scare you, or do you think that they um, they don't really justify or well? So, Crystal, I definitely think the girl, little girl, justifies it, but I'm just gonna say that those are the only ones they showed us. So if those are already creepy, the worst are yet to come. Uh, I definitely, if I'm playing that game, a little girl pops up, I'm probably going to scream and freak out. Flesh in the closet, like, I mean, if she shows up anywhere else, I'm still going to probably freak out. Little girl is creepy as shit. Um, even the one on the VHS tape, like, I guess those, those creep me out. They're, they're really fucking spooky. But like I said, that's just a taste of what's in the game. So if those are the only ones they're willing to show us, then, like I said, the worst is yet to come. And I'm just, I'm not mentally prepared for what else I'm going to see in the game. Because if those are creeping me out, I can only imagine what else is going to pop up in my face. I agree with that, definitely. Is there anything else you want to add, though, Lamont, in your sake? Um, it'd probably be beating the dead horse since we all said it and wanted, but just that the entities would actually scare us. And, and I'm not talking about just by looks, like the things they do in the game. Like, maybe give us, like, something sort of in um, comparison to Outlast, like some nice chase scenes or something like that. I would enjoy that. I would enjoy that as well. I just hope, uh, I'll also add, uh, I hope that the dark entity, they make like the eeriest sound as well. Something that's going to make your skin crawl. Like, I just, like, because if these things are supposed to be from an, uh, an other world, um, like a more darker side of the world, or even supposed to represent one of our greatest fears, per se, since they mentioned, uh, what would we become if we couldn't even recognize ourselves in the mirror? So I can only imagine, like, if they tried to pull off one of those, like, what is hiding deep inside us that is waiting to come out kind of thing. So I just hope, like, as for dark entities, I just really hope they make them eerie. And they do scare me because I will say it again, just like we probably mentioned ten times in this episode, I want... A game that scared me. And I really hope and I have potential that Vigid is going to be that game. Especially when I have that VR headset on. But, uh, yeah. So, is there anything else that you guys would like to add that uh, we didn't cover? Is there anything at all? Um, right now, I will say that the release date is looking at uh, the second quarter of this year. So we may see it in like June or so. It's... I think we pretty much covered everything from what knowledge we have so far. But, um... Yeah. 
I don't think we've missed too much. I mean, they haven't given a lot of detail. I mean, they've given us taste of what, you know, is to come. But like I said, I mean, if that's what they're willing to show us, the worst is just to come in this year. So, um, I'm just looking forward to I'm looking forward to how scared I'm actually going to get in this thing. Yeah, I cannot wait. Well, okay, guys, um, that about wraps up the season finale of season one of Everything Horror Podcast. Um, so, from you guys here real quick, how did you guys enjoy the uh, season one of Everything Horror Podcast? Well, I loved it. I enjoyed it. It was amazing. Yeah, it was definitely a fucking fun um, what yeah. better way to do stuff like this than with friends, though? Agreed. Right? Agreed. They all like have the same love of war. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's kind of why me and Tessa started this too, just because me and her love horror, and um, we just figured it'd we were, be a good hobby to. It would be a good hobby. Together. Yeah, because we don't like well. We do a lot together, but we figure... It'd be a fun hobby to do It'd be together. a fun hobby, <laughs> since it's our favorite horror. Yeah, our favorite genre. genre. Horror is our favorite everything. Horror equals life. <laughs> Which I will probably put a link up for that shirt. So that way, if you guys would like to have your very own t-shirt of horror equals everything, with the eye and life is a knife. Yeah, that's right. I went there. Uh... <laughs> See, you try to say that three times fast. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had, this is probably one of my favorite episodes as well. I mean, Creep Show, that episode was awesome. Uh, I really liked the Outlast, the horror guys that you guys did. As the only female horror podcast. So maybe we can try to do like, uh, all female podcast episode like every season try to thing try to keep it fresh and unique I guess um but yeah uh is there anything else that's coming out that you guys are really excited for agony agony definitely yeah that's going to be another... Agony, Visage, and um, what was that other one? Friday was it 13. Ghost Theory? Ghost Theory, yep. Yeah, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, yeah, well, yeah. This, this year is good with video game-wise, not that great movie-wise, I think. Because <laughs> one of my films already got canned this year, so I'm not really impressed with that yet. So, but, uh, Wait, which one got canned? The uh, Friday the Thirteenth origin story, they, that one got canned. Oh, man. Yeah, but all right, guys. Um, th- for for those listening, I want to thank you all. If you have listened to every single episode this far, whether it be in just the regular season or off season or both, I sincerely appreciate it. If you made it this long, I will tell you what, I hope season two brings out more awesomeness because we got a really good lineup for you. Um, I am hoping to have an interview with, um, with hopefully a couple people that I have messaged. I know one guy has actually confirmed he is willing to do the interview. We just need to figure out a date. Um, so... I don't want to say too much of who it is, but if you guys are into Halloween music, then you may know who I'm speaking of. But, once again, I am your host for the evening, Paul Dosky. I am uh, your co-host, Tessa Baker. I'm your co-assistant host, Crystal Bella. And I am your special guest, Lamont Derrickson. And together... We all will tell you, and on the count of three, we'll try this for the very last episode, guys. Come on. At the count of three, say, stay scary at the count of three. Ready? Three, two, one. Stay Stay scary. scary.